In this tutorial we're going to look at using Mirth as a relay for receiving an HL7 message and writing that out to another system and also writing it out to a file. And we will transform those messages as we go so we can create some real world examples here. So first of all I'm going to start by creating a new channel and I'm going to call it Mirth Relay. And I'm going to go to the source and I'm going to set this one as a TCP lister, which is the standard transfer for HL7 messages, and it's on MLLP on port 6661. I'm going to change that across to port 6672 for my message. And now I'm going to create the destination. So my first destination is going to be my TCP listener. So, I'll call this TCP relay. And it is going to be changed across obviously to a TCP sender. So we're going to forward that on to another system that's going to be listening for it. And I'm going to configure that to port 22222. Now if I test this connection, it, there's nothing running at the moment, so I get an error response. Uh, that's fine, I know that's going to happen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter this message, it's pre-configured with, with the message that it was received, and it's, we're just going to alter that message slightly. So what I'm going to do, just for this demo, is I'm going to look at that message quickly. Uh, this is the message I'm going to send, it's an ADTA of 4 for registering a patient. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra next of kin data. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to copy the existing one to make this tutorial easier. And I'm just going to come down here and at the end of that message I'm going to paste this in. And I'm going to change the name to uh, Smith and Bob. Okay, so Bob Smith, as the next of kin, will be appended to the bottom of this message. Pretty straightforward. Okay, and I was going to also create a second destination, so I'm going to go new destination again, and I'm going to call this one file relay. And it's going to get a type of file writer. Uh, I'm going to write this out to my C drive, and I want to give it a file name, and I want to give it a unique name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this, and I'm going to copy the entire message to my clipboard, and then come back into Mirth. Okay, so now what I want to do is get the message control ID out of this, and put it in as the file name. So having selected file relay, I now go to Edit Transformer, and up to message templates and this is an HL7 message so I can paste that into there and we can use this as our sample message tree. So if I now click on message trees, if I now go to the message tree I can go up to the MSH and I can scroll down to the MSH10 which is the message control ID and I just expand this out as far as I go until I can see the number. Um, which is Mirth has transformed that from the message template I, I pasted in and I can just drag that across and it's now created a variable which I'm going to copy the name of which basically gets its value from MSH 10.1 uh, again the message control ID so I go back to the channel and now I should be able to grab that and drop it straight onto my file name so I didn't even need to copy it like I did now I can just call it dot hl7 okay and so into this message I'm just going to put the encoded data which is the message that came in so I can just drag that down and paste that in there and I will also put in this next of kin information so I can copy that come back to this and for this particular one I'm going to change the name to Jones. 
Okay, so now we've completed our relay. I'm just going to save that and come back into here and deploy the channel. And I've checked that it has gone into the started status. So now, uh, if we recall, I'm just going to go back to the, my channel for a second just so I can show you. My source was on this port 66672. I'm going to copy that and go into HR7 soup. And I'm just going to create a new send. So I can click that down. I am on local host, so the server is all correctly configured. I'm just going to paste it in as the appropriate port and hit OK. So what I'm going to do now that I've created that sending to local host is I'm just going to test it so I can show you what happens when I send this message. And as we can see, the message has gone through. It's received and accepted that. Now, of course, that should have failed. If we go back to Mirth and I have a look at its dashboard, I have an error message here. And the reason that's going to have failed is because it didn't actually... HR7 soup was not yet configured to receive that message. So I'm just going to come in here. I double clicked on that so I can now see that the TCP relay errored, but the file relay actually sent. So that one succeeded. I could actually now go and diagnose why I wasn't able to receive that message. But since I know what it was, I'm just going to go back to my channel and I'm going to edit my channel. And I'm going to change my source so that it actually didn't. The, the, the problem I have got here is it actually said that it was a good send and I don't want it to be a good send because it did actually fail. So I'm going to change my response to instead of after source transformed, it's going to be after all the destinations have completed. Go back to my channel, save away and I redeploy it. Okay, and now if I hit send, the response is an error which is correct. So now let's go and fix that error. We're going to create a new tab and I'm going to set up a receiving endpoint. So I'm going to listen to the local host on port 2222 as we said. So that's configured. I'll just delete the sample message here so we can see the new one comes through. And now I can click send and it's going to fail again. And that is because I didn't click start. So I'm going to click on the start and then we're going to come back to our main message and let's try another message. Um, I'm going to hit send to localhost and now we've got a successful receipt and the message has come through and hit this. And so I can continue to go sending up through the demos. One, two, and we can see that they're all flowing through correctly to our listener. We should now also be able to go to my C drive and we will see if I scroll to the bottom these new HL7 messages that have been created. They've got the control ID as their file name and they are now loadable up into the other application. And if we scroll to the bottom of those, we'll see our next of kin information stamped onto the bottom.